Hey guys, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go, and today we're gonna to be talking about shooting food. I'm gonna show you the steps that I took to go from a shot that looks like this to a shot that looks like this. The food that I'm gonna be shooting today, like you just saw in those photos, is a bread bowl soup. And the first thing that you wanna decide after figuring out what product you're shooting is what mood you wanna go for. Do you want it bright and happy or do you want it more dark and moody? Once you have that, you can start building this world or scene around your main dish. The next thing that you wanna look for is where the light is coming from. We have a huge window on the side here, so I'm just gonna move my whole setup closer to that. If you don't have a window to shoot near or you're shooting at night, you can always add in your own lights. Check out the video that I did on tabletop lighting, which I'll link to right up here. The big thing is that you wanna have really soft shadows. So using diffusion to soften up hard light or shooting out of direct sunlight or your house lights is key. Knowing the style that you wanna go for can really help when you're deciding on what props and backgrounds to get. For our shot, I just got this wood cutting board because I wanted to go for a rustic vibe. It only cost about $25. Once you have your background and your lighting, then you can start building your dish. Think about what ingredients go into it, what the culture is behind it, or how you want to present that to your viewer. And then think about where you want this to take place. Do you want it in the kitchen when it's being cooked and being created? Or do you want this to be at the dining table when it's being served and enjoyed by people? For my shot, I'm gonna go more with the cooking process and the raw ingredients. So a few of the things that I picked up at the store was parsley for the garnish, pumpkin seeds, garlic, small gourds, a bread bowl, and then I got some hemp or a burlap fabric to add some texture. And lastly, a small jar, which I just put some of the pumpkin seeds in. In general, it's a good idea to get neutral color objects for anything that's not part of the dish. It'll help the food stand out a little more. Remember, sometimes it is better to keep it simple and use less props. But all of these small things can come together to help build the scene and convey a mood or tone. Before you start placing all the items, you wanna think about what direction and what angle you're gonna be shooting at. The two most popular angles are 45 degrees coming in from the side and then 90 degrees or straight down. The direction you should shoot should be against the light, meaning that you're not on the same side that the light is coming in from. So if the light is coming in from this window, I wanna try and stay on the opposite side of the table. If you're shooting from overhead, it's not as big of a deal, but it's good to plan in case that you wanna jump down to that 45, you don't have to rearrange things mid-shoot. Now it's time to place the props or ingredients. The only thing that you don't wanna do is block your main dish. So if you're shooting from the side, make sure to put the shorter items in front of it and the taller items behind your main dish. It can also be helpful to lock your camera down on a tripod and then style everything towards the camera. This way your composition's not gonna be changing every time you go to take a photo. From here, it's just playing around with your props and the composition to get something that you like. It's always a good idea to keep your main dish on one of the thirds or directly in the center of the photo. Keep in mind where this photo is gonna end up as well. If you're going on Instagram, then you're gonna have a four by five crop on it. Or if you're going for a magazine or a video, it might be something different. And the last thing that I'm gonna leave you with is add a little bit of action to your shot. Have somebody scooping out the soup or sprinkling some cheese on the top of a pasta dish. It can really add a lot to your final shot. If you guys wanna learn more about the camera and lens that I use, I'm gonna be making another video which will be linked to at the end of this one. And I'll run through all my settings and also some other options for gear. That's all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video or got anything out of it, let me know by hitting that like button right down there. And make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. I put up videos at least twice a week. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace.